All right, so it's just about nine o'clock, so I guess I'll get started. Uh, again, my name is Francesca, and I'm from New York University, and I'm here to moderate the presentation for this morning. Uh, today, we will be seeing an overview of UX design research at Marist College, and this will be presented by Louisa Lee and Dee Dee Hurricane. Uh, I'll get to their bios in a little bit, just some general housekeeping things to talk about. Um, so please note that all attendees will be muted for this session. Uh, however, if you have any questions, please do feel free to type them in the chat window and then I'll be fielding them uh, as the moderator to Louisa and Didi. Um, you can enter questions at any time uh, and I'm sure that we'll have a Q&A session following the presentation. Uh, just to let folks know that this session is being recorded and will be available at a later date on the Aperio YouTube channel. Uh, it'll just be the screen that'll, that will be recorded, so no worries there. And if you have any problems with audio or video, just enter them in the questions box. All right, so a little bit about our presenters. So we have Louisa Lee and Dee Dee Hurricane, both from Marist College. Uh, Louisa is an instructional designer in academic technology and e-learning at Marist College. Her work focuses on faculty development training, support, course design, and research on innovative educational technologies. Louisa is an active member in the Sakai community, most recently involved in the Lessons Enhancement Project called LEAP, and teaching with Sakai Innovation Award. And Dee Dee Hurricane is a support specialist in the Office of Academic Technology at Marist College. Dee Dee helps to facilitate the campus-wide use of technology in the classroom for students, faculty, staff for both the New York and Italy campuses. All right, so at this time, I'm going to change over presenter to Louisa. And we can start the presentation. So just a second, I'm going to show my screen. Okay. All right. So can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay. So I'm using a Prezi. Hopefully nobody's getting too bit dizzy. Okay. Um, okay. Let's start. Um, this is an overview. So the focus will be on the whole process. So and how we learned about UX, how we learned to do it. So we're still newbies, so we're in <laughs> any means uh, expert on this, uh, just to show you how we came to this point. Um, so at the very beginning, uh, that was in fall 2013, uh, we finished the upgrade the new system, and we think, what else can we do about it? Uh, we tried to combine this Lean UX concept and see what we can do more about the uh, island, which is our brand for Sakai and Marist College. Uh, so what is Lean UX? We learned from this book uh, by Jeff uh, Gothel and Josh Seaton. We learned that it's not about deliverables. It's not about how you design it. It's about how you focus on the user experience and design something that for the user, you focus on problem solving. Uh, I uh, add a link here, um, and if you're interested, you can go to the link and uh, um, see the whole slideshows. That's a lot of information there. I picked only two most important slides here. Uh, you can see there are a lot of terminologies and concepts we don't really understand. So, for example, what is individuals and interactions over processes and tools? <laughs> You read it, you don't really understand it. Okay, so we didn't, and it took us a lot of time to finally understand it. Uh, but this process, because this is a very fun graphics, <laughs> we understand <laughs> it better. Um, so first, we start with a concept, you know, some ideas, and internally we say, okay, this is something we can work on. Then we design a prototype. Uh, then we find some customers or clients, how, however you call it, and test it. That's the old-fashioned usability testing that you usually focus on. Uh, but then the UX design move on beyond that. So we move on to learn from the user behavior, um, change our design in certain way, and go around again. 
so it go it uh, it iterates. Um, this is a general the UX design process that, that we have. Um, okay. Um, is there any problem here? Okay, no. Um, so let me move on. Okay. Um, so we get started. That's in fall 2013, and just several months we got so tired and exhausted. We started with um, analysis of entire Sakai and figure out what <laughs> we want to work on. You can see all the screenshots here uh, and the all hands on deck. Everyone in our department pulled together uh, because none of us knew what we were doing. So we started with group meetings where we began to look at all the complaints that we receive um, from our end users, looking at the highest volumes of calls where people are most frustrated. So we began by defining what those problems were after looking at the entire system and, and recognizing that we as, as support people um, hear the most problems. We began to plan. Um, we, uh, as you can see from the screenshots, we began uh, just uh, looking at our Excel spreadsheets on each of the data points, or as we were looking at them, the pain points that our customers were complaining about. Uh, this was very intensive. We were following the old models of how one would uh, improve on software looking at each item, how would it uh, fit with the other uh, items that are also upsetting people. So for example, it could have been one of the tools within iLearn that is too complicated for people to set up. Yeah, so by no means it was um, UX design or lean mm -hmm. UX design. design. It's not lean at all. Um, so luckily someone came to rescue us. <laughs> Sam Peck. <laughs> yes. We uh, finally reached out to a very great um, UX designer, Sam Pack. He is based in UK. Uh, he very generously offered the training to us. He came over us to Maris and provide training for two days. You can see that we very actively discussed and uh, brainstormed. You can see all the stickers on the walls <laughs> and everything. Um, so we, he walked us through the process. You, you know, the, first they do all the brainstormings and figure out the pain points, the frustrations, um, and go through the whole process here. So for example, during this time, if you look on the screenshot, you'll see to the left-hand side, we began with a user profile. We picked two user profiles, <coughs> excuse me, from faculty, one being adjunct, one being uh, on campus. Um, we looked at the pain points that they were talking about. Some of those frustrations are that they couldn't have uh, answers to questions when they needed it when we were unavailable outside of business hours. So we began to look at their behaviors. What were they doing during that time? For example, they would um, train each other. Um, so a, a train the trainer model, but the first person hadn't been trained, so they were giving out incorrect information. We began to then look at the goals and our ideal solutions, and some of those goals included um, videos or uh, answers to those questions or uh, we just didn't know how the, the faculty were helping themselves. Yeah. Um, so after this analysis, we came up with some hypothesis. You know, what if we can do something? And we need to validate that by doing mock-ups and uh, in, uh, external testings with the clients. And then when we came up with some solutions, uh, we redesign things and iterate. So this is the general process. So uh, in February, we also tried to uh, do our mock-ups, right? Uh, so we tried what the designers usually do. It's an uh, omnigraph and very professional. Um, and also Azura and uh, another WYSIWYG builder uh, type of uh, uh, application. Also in design, Photoshop, PowerPoint. Guess which one we landed in? <laughs> <laughs> PowerPoint. <laughs> yeah, we eventually decide to use PowerPoint to do our mockups. Yeah, so uh, it's efficient. We already know how to do it uh, in PowerPoint and also it's free. It's, it, free. it's already in office. Right. So, uh, good news. We finally got IRB approval in March 
and we get started on this project. Now, we have a plan. Um, the plan is now really, really simple. Instead of analyzing the entire Sakai, we come up with a very simple problem here. Now, so the island support documents are not being used. How can we get users to use it? Uh, as I understand it, it's a very popular problem among <laughs> all the institutions that use Sakai. And also the message of the day. Nobody reads the message of the day. Um, and also, uh, we also want to find out how the users usually do in Islay. We have so many tools. What do they do with them? Uh, so for the UX design, uh, we uh, find line this is a problem, and we ask this is three questions. How does a user find Island support documentation when he or she needs it? Two, how does a user find or want to be notified of the message of the day? And the third one, what does a user usually do in iLearn? So with these questions in mind, we design the whole procedure. The users need to perform three tasks. First, uh, they need to uh, rate, we give them a list of iLearn activities. They need to rate them um, on a stack of cards. Mm -hmm. All right. Second, they log into iLearn and go to a course site. Third, we give them some difficult activity to do and see if they go seek help with the iLearn documentation. All right. And we prepared some materials to facilitate this, this test. First, we have a very detailed interview procedure description. Basically, it's a testing script. So what we say. We find it very useful because this is the first time you're doing this. We need to be on the same page. Everyone needs to be yeah. equally saying the same uh -huh. thing. And also to record how the users behave, we installed this screen face cam on the computer so it records the screen and the face of the uh, testers, yeah, the participants. Also, we have a stack of cards uh, with the common iLearn activities printed on them uh, so they can actually print. And also we have camera to take pictures of those cards, not take pictures of the participants, it's <laughs> pictures of the cards. The, moving on to the next slide. Yeah. Uh, so we um, recruited the participants in three groups, faculty, staff, and the students. So in total, I think we uh, probably interviewed 19 people. Yeah, a lot of people. Again, this is not necessarily lean. OK, so everything's ready. we finally taking the plunge. <laughs> yeah, it's a. Um, you know, we planned for almost six months. Yeah, at least the six months. Finally, we take the plunge. Okay, so this is finally what we did. During the beginning of March, um, we had 19 participants scheduled. We took photographs of the cards. That was actually something we did in the office. Um, we would hand the um, end user, whether it's faculty or student, uh, the, the cards, um, there were six of them that had actual pre-printed information on them. The other two were allowed to be written on with a dry eraser to state to the end user what they want from iLearn. Uh, some of these were uh, new tools, some of them were processes. Um, understanding a weekly announcement as the best way of using the tools. And th by rating these, we were able then to do um, analysis at the end to see what each group of users was in what we found was important to them. This is um, what screen face cam recorded in one of our sessions. Uh, you'll see a, a picture in the lower right hand corner of um, our user and this is what occurred at that time. Um, I'm sorry I didn't. It's not a video. My apologies. The video would be recorded. We then would have students in our office who would uh, type up all of the of uh, the content that was spoken about, whether it was the tools, exactly what the end user stated, and we took that information and also uh, compiled that in and rated it as well. Okay, we have all this data, and this is what we did with them. Okay, so. Uh, to recall what we talked at the very beginning, 
this is the general UX design process. Uh, now that we have all this data, we did a very brief glean analysis. We have a quick tally of numbers, look at notes, and we summarized. Uh, er almost everybody click on the help button for support documentation. Uh, no matter how much we prepare for them, <laughs> they all click on the help button. Right, and almost all of them never look at a message of date. Yes, scan yes. completely over. They uh -huh. did not read it at all yeah. because it looked the same. Yeah, so uh, it confirms or um, kind of um, validates validate, validate internally that uh, this is uh, uh, what we all uh, long suspected. This is what they behave. Okay, so we came up with a solution internally. We will redesign the help menu and also redesign the message of the day. So we want to prototype or do mockups. Uh, this is what we did with the mockup. Oops. Um, okay. Uh, so we uh, redesigned the, I don't know. Okay, we redesigned the help menu interface and also we made the mockups of the help menu and the, um, uh, this is the PowerPoint, uh, recording of the PowerPoint that we made with the help menu. You can see when I click the help, this page will show up. And here you can have links to all the help documentation that we did. Okay, so this is the help menu. And then if they click the close page, they will go back to the help. Right. Now, uh, here's another markup that we did for the message of the day. Now when they log into iLearn, this is what they usually see. Uh, suddenly a pop-up show up and say, hey, there's a service outage um, and you get notified. Okay, this is the second design. They will get a flashing screen on the top. Yeah. Going from <laughs> the left to the right. Uh, after I show you, you can guess which one got most, most popular. Third one is got a classical button they can open and close. All right. Um, so I wonder if you have your own judgment which one you like. Among all the uh, learners, uh, the we went to test again, two faculty and a focus group of nine students. Uh, it's a landslide result. Everybody liked the new help <laughs> menu and the pop pop up windows. For the message of the day. It's very interesting. Okay. Um, when I said interesting, which means nobody liked my design. <laughs> nobody liked your design. Sorry, <laughs> Louisa. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so uh, we got what we needed. We want to implement those changes. This is what we did in summer 2014. We upgrade the island again one more time and we redesign the uh, I learn uh, landing page and we put in the new FAQ pages uh, with teach and learn and collaborate. And if the users click on the help menu, this is what they see. Okay, uh, they will see all the uh, the same similar images leading to the FAQ pages. Yeah, so uh, this is a close up so, uh, so that you can see uh, the design. For the message of the day, because we have other internal discussions of it, uh, we haven't implemented uh, possibly in the next renovation, uh, we will finally implement and do more tests and iterate. All right, so this is the general process that we did. Um, it's a pretty short presentation. Uh, we have about like 20 minutes for questions. Okay. This is the overview, so we might have um, a lot of things that we forgot or taken for granted. So please feel free to ask questions. Thank you so much, Luis and Didi. Um, I actually just launched a quick poll for folks maybe to get the conversation started. Uh, I don't know if anyone can, I think folks can see it, but the question is, has anyone tried a UX strategy at their institution before? Can you see the poll? Nope. We're not seeing that, unfortunately. Uh, 
Oh, people are voting. Maybe you guys can't see it because you're a presenter. Oh, uh, we're presenters. Yeah. This is a poll in progress. Yes. All right. So I think folks have answered. Well, 75%. Uh, and it looks like the majority, so 89% of our participants today say that they have not tried a UX strategy at their institution, uh, and 11% uh, say that they have. So those, wow. those are some interesting numbers. Well, some of the advice we can offer for those who have not had the opportunity yet to, to do this um, process in their institution our planning was actually quite important. Uh, it was the getting lean that was harder. For example, uh, recognizing um, when Sam first got here, he was here for approximately three days, I believe. Um, and during that time, uh, the uh, as you can see from this photograph here, we spent a lot of time in the office going through quick and easy and speedy um, results. Uh, the quick mock-ups on the screen um, that we were just using a whiteboard for actually gave us more information. Some of the people that were in the room were not tech savvy and we needed people who weren't tech savvy who hadn't been playing with the tools and the items every single day because we make assumptions. Um, so we needed somebody else in the room who wasn't. So we invited other group members from um, our departments and they were telling us item, uh, complaints that we had not been aware of. For example, do they use the help menu? They didn't use any of the blue um, question mark buttons within the, the tool specific help, but no, they were going straight to the help menu as well, even when we were available and in the office. That was new information for us. Being able to redesign that just by throwing together a quick PowerPoint with those screenshots of changes that we made and giving them three options to try again and five minutes later, that kind of process was actually more informative. Whether or not we could actually implement the solution, the, um, the, the engagement of the end user in the process was part of making it, what, what would uh, Sam Peck say, a delightful experience for the user. Is there any questions coming? Uh, no one's typed in any questions. Uh, I'm not sure. You know, we are a small group. I may just unmute some of the microphones to help facilitate a group conversation. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. All right. Unmuting. All right, so we're a group of 16. And I'm un So if anyone has a question that they'd like to ask directly to Louisa or Didi, uh, feel free to do so. So does anyone have a question that they'd like to ask our facilitators? This is Constance from UC Davis. Um, about the screen capture and the recording, um, I'm assuming that you did that after you had implemented a couple of samples, or was that mock-ups and then you recorded their behavior? Did you record a camera over their shoulder, or did you use a utility uh, to capture where they were clicking on the screen? Um, actually, Constance, we did the, uh, Using screen face cam, we came up with uh, questions on how they used it. That was our detailed information on doing a script for each end user. Using screen face cam, we recorded what they did, um, as well as ask, since we're, all of the uh, facilitators were asking the same questions, um, we could compare the end user's response physically as well as, um, also you could judge how they, uh, how they felt about each tool. You could see whether they were irritated or angry or just um, completely neutral. Um, so we can see not only somebody's um, we can see each of the ways that they uh, that they clicked on the screen um, while seeing their face. And no, at that time we did not uh, have uh, solutions in place as yet. 
on, on, on some of them. And then we went back to them after we had solutions and redid this process with those solutions. Does that answer your question, Constance? Yeah, it does. And once you um, had decided on the pop-up for the uh, message of the day, because that's clearly um, a, a pain point at UC Davis as well, um, and so uh, was it difficult to implement that pop-up uh, procedure? Uh, we only here at Marist um, upgrade approximately once a year. Uh, we pretty much have one day in the summer with which to implement every tool that we've been looking at for the course of the year, and that is a, a policy decision based on the school. Uh, so we haven't been able to implement our options at that time for the message of the day because we we miss the technically we missed the time frame with which we could implement. So uh, we're hoping that in our next go around, which will be this coming summer, uh, that we'll be able to do that as well as a whole bunch of other uh, things that we're testing out currently now. In which version of Sakai are you on? 2.9.4. Okay. And we're on hybrid. the same. Oh, and, and we are hybrid. Okay. Um, yeah, we have 9 and 10 in there. Yeah, we have, we, have, we should get the technical people to talk about that. <laughs> um, anyone else for questions? Carol Hale from New York University. Hello. I was wondering, hi. Um, I was wondering how you got uh, buy-in from uh, university leadership on, on going forward with the project. Oh, leadership um, uh, on agreeing with the project. Uh, uh, it's the same. They have their pain points as well. So giving them a solution rather than um, another problem is one of the ways you get buy-in. For example, uh, some of our high-end leadership. Uh, and uh, didn't like the way uh, it looked. They, they didn't like it themselves, and that was a complaint that came down uh, from them. So by showing that we were making progress and changes, they were so supportive of it. Uh, it was r ridiculous how good that was. Everyone wants a, wants to be a participant. It's surprising. How do I say this better? Everyone that we reached out to, anyone who has a complaint, if you if you let them know that you're engaging a solution for them based on the fact, based on the information they're already giving you by stating I don't like this or I don't like that, and going back to them saying we're we're working on this solution, would you be willing to work with us to get this going? Is a perfect way to gain buy-in. Did that answer your question? Yes, it did. Okay. Uh, Dee Dee and Louisa, we have a question that was typed in by Linda, um, and her question is, did you replace the question mark help on each tool, or is the help an additional option? Um, I'm going to show you the, uh, the help menu um, here, and you can see. Uh, we replaced the, okay, so if you look at this help menu button here, and you can see on the left the panel, we cleaned up those tools, but they remain there. What we did was to replace the text that we used to have here, yeah. with, uh, which is barely anything, and we replaced them with those FEQ images and the links. Yeah, they were specific, but for the tools themselves, no, they still link back to the um, in in installed help menu uh, tool-specific items. Mm -hmm. Um, we put Google Analytics on there, on those pages, and we did see a large increase uh, uh, of access to those FAQ pages. Yeah. What, I guess what, the, what we're trying to clarify is we found that people were using the help button in the lower left-hand uh, selection choices. Um, most people were not actually even using the tool-specific help. When, so in order to focus on what would have the most impact, we worked on the help menu itself. Um, our, our help menu, I believe, resides with our vendor. Um, so, uh, so we couldn't change anything on the right-hand side, but by change, I mean the left-hand frame, but we could change the right-hand frame. And by working towards getting the end user to use the FAQs that we created here, because obviously they're school specific and their best practice is based on what we are doing here and what tools we have implemented in the same manner. Um, we were trying to force them to use those items, th those FAQs and those help menus rather than the tool specific ones on, because it didn't answer their questions of, it's, most of the questions we received were not how 
um, not how to do something, but how to do it the way, how to answer their question. For example, uh, uh, forums. The forums tool is very confusing for many of the faculty, uh, especially if they're doing group aware forums. Uh, having them go to the, the forums tool help menu is actually more um, how to set up a forum, but it doesn't say how to help them in that particular situation, which we already have in our FAQs. Did, did that clarify? Yes, Linda says yes. Thank you, Linda. So this is this is Francesca. I have a general question for folks that answered our poll before. So has anyone tried a UX strategy at their institution? Uh, for the eleven percent that answered yes, I'm curious to hear. Uh, what your experience has been and if it's similar to what Marist was able to facilitate. Um, can you repeat that? Yeah, sure. So I'm just curious to hear uh, what other folks have done within the UX space and if it's similar to the experience uh, that, that you presented on. That would be great to know. My guess is other words are not, not as comfortable as we are in sharing all that information and work that they put in. This is Constance again from UC Davis. I haven't uh, done the UX um, here at the university in this context, but have done similar things at um, other organizations uh, earlier in my career, and that was why I was asking about the, the technique, the cameras, uh, where the cameras are positioned, how you're, you know, the technology that you're using today to do that, and, and the feedback. Um, on the cards that you gave them, yes. uh, you said you used a dry erase uh, marker on that. So were they like laminated cards and you had each person, you know, re recomplete those and, and the topics that you had for those, um, those were like a screen capture of that, of that uh, slide, I think is pretty interesting. What were the questions that you were asking and um, what kinds of things did they come up with on their own cards that, that were new to you? Were there any trends on that or were they really all over the map? Uh, yes, we uh, have three group of cards for different group of people, uh, faculty, staff, and students. Uh, what I'm showing on the screen is for, for the faculty. And you can see that we have printed on these laminated cards uh, six activities. Those are the common ones we think that they would usually do. And then from different people, we received um, different answers and some of them provide a few things that they think are more important. Uh, for example, on this particular person, uh, he put number one is to do the uh, weekly assignments, right? And also he wants to do chat, right? Um, and he has his own order of things. Um, I remember for another faculty, he specifically put uh, something like, I want to build a community in Isla uh, for his online teaching. So it's not specifically for a task or activity, it's for uh, uh, design or pedagogical goals. So I think that's a very interesting. Yeah. Um, for the faculty, they look at things more uh, with a pedagogical purpose. It's not specifically one activity, so that's a very interesting. And for students, I think it's mostly about how they use the environment to complete their course. Uh, say they will uh, complete uh, assignments, they will uh, look at the calendar, look at announcement. Um, we did find from the yeah. students that um, we did find from the students that one of their biggest um, pet peeves was the fact that the faculty weren't using the tools appropriately. So, for example, someone's not including uh, the checkbox on an assignment to include the uh, uh, assignment on the calendar. So their aggregated calendar on their homepage does not reflect that they have a test due on Friday or an exam. 
And that, the students' pain points, actually, a lot of them relate to how the faculty are using the tools. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we try to include more staff. And uh, you know that we can use project sites or other purposes. Uh, we did see a, a more uh, awareness than before among the uh, staff. Uh, most of them use it to share documents and also archive all their old documents and sometimes uh, communicate with uh, other people from other departments. Did that answer your question, Constance? Yes. Thank you. Uh, we have another question that came in from Linda, and her question is, did you share the students' pain points with your faculty at large? Not until after we actually did the testing. <laughs> <laughs> and and faculty faculty are very interested in the test. Uh, mm -hmm. They are very glad to be recruited and do the test with us, very curious about the results, and we promise we share with them, and we did. That's actually the buy-in for our next round is people are like, I was part of it last time, can I be part of it now? Oh, that's great. And were you surprised by any of the feedback that you captured? Anything that wasn't expected? Uh, yeah, I had one, um, <laughs> I had one faculty member who uh, uh, used to be a technical writer, so she was actually beating up every word that was written on the screen in any manner, way, shape, or form that didn't conform to what she uh, had expected. And I don't know where the expectation was built, but um, she actually came up with some very, very good ideas. Um, and a lot of it actually we started working on with the Sakai working group for the help menu itself. So I find that very, very telling. Yeah, and I remember uh, one student that we were uh, tested with uh, she absolutely loved to use it, okay? And then she absolutely disliked the interface. <laughs> and tell a lot of things that why he, uh, why he thinks that the interface could have been. And that was a very interesting conversation. Great, so we have about, uh, little less than 10 minutes left. Does anyone else have any questions for Luisa or Didi on the presentation? Uh, just a few words about our next steps. Uh, we will continue the UX testing. Uh, we just started planning for the next runs. Um, you know, we get a new design, we uh, iterate. And what uh, if I have to give you one advice uh, for doing all those UX design or lean UX design is take the plunge, you know, don't ponder too much, don't think too much, yeah. you know, it would never be perfect, just get a problem, you know, find one issue and test yeah. on it, take the plunge, you will figure out eventually, you know, we planned so much at the beginning, oh. it's so exhausting and... We didn't even want to move yeah. on with the project after all that planning <laughs> and tests and, and preparation, it, it was too... It was too detailed, actually. It was too much information. Uh, we, no one had the stomach for continuing. And that was when Sam came in, because we, um, we were overthinking everything. And uh, Sam kept saying, all you're trying to do is build a delightful experience for the end user, still getting done what, they, what we need to get done, but letting them dictate the direction of, of, of the help, what bothers them. So looking at it completely from their point of view, again, um, as we had said before, the starting off with the people who call us the most, and that was pretty much just based on the ticketing system. Um, so uh, looking at those problems and then looking at it again from the um, end user's point of view. So problem first, end user's partic uh, particular, our thoughts on what their, their real problems are, and then having them clarify whether we're right or wrong. But, and it, it, that can be done in, we in a week. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, I put this link um, of this Prezi in the conference site. You, are, If you're interested, take a look at the Prezi afterwards. And also, you can go to the forum to post questions and ask us about it. Thank you.
Okay, great. Thank you. So I guess if there's no other questions from the group, uh, I'll be ending the session a few minutes early. Thank you, Francesca. Thank you very much for having us. So we have the um, the PowerPoint that we can refer back to. Um, are these questions and and uh, dialogue also recorded for us to re review? Yes. So this session has been recorded, uh, and I believe at some point over the next two weeks or so, uh, all of the sessions will be uploaded to the Aperio YouTube channel for a reference. Perfect. Thank you. And feel free to reach out to us directly at any time. We'd be more than happy to help out. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. See you in another session. Great. Thank you.